Limitless is a 2011 film starring Bradley Cooper who plays Eddie, a struggling 30-something year old author in New York City. At the start of the film, Eddie's life is going downhill. Like so many of us, he seems to be struggling with motivation and he's finding it almost impossible to focus, feeling too tired to do any meaningful work for most of his day. This all changes, however, when a friend hands him a stash of a mysterious nootropic agent, NZT. And so, with a little help from NZT, Eddie quickly turns his life around. He becomes limitless. He becomes Bradley Cooper. Unfortunately for all of us wanting to become Bradley Cooper, NZT doesn't exist. But Medafinil does. And students all over the world are all over it. According to a recent study, 1 in 5 of all university students in the UK have taken the popular study drug, Medafinil. And a survey by Nature showed a similar appetite for cognitive enhancers amongst college students in the United States. And while many people may consider taking study drugs to be something akin to cheating, the numbers are suggesting that their use is quickly becoming the new norm amongst university students. And can you blame them? Our society has developed this strange and toxic obsession with people taking on more than they can possibly handle, maximizing one's use of one's mind and one's time and getting more done on any given day. Productivity is the new national anthem. I mean, have you seen a number of productivity YouTube channels lately? It's all the rage right now. Because why settle for less when you can have a little bit more with a little pharmaceutical help? You can be limitless. This may help explain why prescription rates in England for stimulants including Ritalin and Modafinil saw a 400% increase between 1998 and 2014. These numbers are of course only the tip of the iceberg as most students using Modafinil will get their supplies online rather than by prescription from a doctor. And what's the problem anyway? Everyone drinks coffee to stay awake and be more alert and get more stuff done. What's so wrong with taking a pill for your next all-nighter. My name is Hashem and I'm a University of Cambridge graduate and student doctor and this is Doctor Tell Me Why, a place where I get to read all about science and medicine and share the cool stuff that I learn with you guys. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon. And now back to Medafinil. Medafinil is a little like coffee, in that it counteracts the effects of sleep deprivation in adults, meaning it promotes wakefulness, allowing you to function despite having had little or no sleep. This is important because college students frequently find themselves sleep deprived, as evidenced by the fact that only 11% of American college students sleep well with just 40% feeling well rested on two days or more each week. But surely, people wouldn't go out of their way to illegally purchase Modafinil online if all that they needed was an extra cup of coffee. Right? While caffeine has a half-life of approximately 5 hours, meaning you can expect to eliminate half the caffeine in your blood within 5 hours, Modafinil has a half-life closer to the 15-hour mark. So, unlike coffee which will keep you up for a few extra hours, Modafinil promises the entire night and probably most of the next day too, which is probably why Modafinil was used by the US military on pilots going on 40 hour missions in Afghanistan. Yes, Afghanistan. Modafinil is also prescribed by the French military and Canadian astronauts apparently have an unchecked supply of the stuff while they're on space missions. Which is maybe a good thing because Modafinil also improves the experience of working, making you enjoy what you are actually doing which can have important effects on motivation, helping you to complete a specific task. It's been described as giving individuals a singular focus on what they're doing. The task at hand becomes the priority and all distractions like your phone for example are very easy to ignore. You can see this illustrated in the bar chart showing how a group of students perform in a study following sleep deprivation. The number of missed targets significantly decreases following modafinil administration, compared to the placebo group, and higher doses of modafinil seem to improve overall accuracy and focus. But modafinil doesn't work the same for everyone. This bar chart illustrates the average time taken to complete a clock drawing by two groups of students one with high IQ and the other with low IQ. 
but Daphna led to no improvement in clock drawing speed amongst the high IQ group, while the low IQ group saw a small yet significant improvement. Other studies have had similar findings, and so what this tells us is that not everyone should expect to see the same benefits out of modafinil supplementation or modafinil treatment. The people who are most likely to benefit from modafinil treatment are those who expect to function while they are sleep deprived, those with lower baseline function, and also those who are easily distracted by the things around them, like social media. Which is probably why it's being explored as a potential new and effective treatment for ADHD, and as a treatment for cocaine addiction. Before I tell you about all that though, I think you should know that next week I'll be publishing a video about why athletes, both professional and amateur, are doping on everyone's favorite study drug, modafinil, in an effort to improve their athletic performance. If you'd like to watch that video, then you should subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified when it's published. Now back to modafinil, cocaine, modafinil and cocaine addiction. Yes. Modafinil has been shown to be an effective treatment for cocaine addiction because it shares one of its main targets in the human brain with cocaine. Both modafinil and cocaine block the dopamine transporter in the nucleus accumbens, a key area in the brain involved in motivation, emotional processing, and feeling pleasure. What this does is it gives your brain a huge burst of dopamine leading to increased pleasure, increased motivation, and a heightened emotional state. And cocaine may actually be more similar to modafinil than most people think. I mean, people usually think of cocaine as being a party drug, and they're correct. But plenty of people use cocaine as a work drug too, in high intensity jobs. Bankers, for example, are very well known to abuse cocaine on the job. Modafinil, however, is 10 times less potent than cocaine. Comparing dopamine concentrations following cocaine or modafinil administration, you can see that according to this study, modafinil results in a modest increase in dopamine. The increase in dopamine is also sustained, tapering off over many, many hours, unlike that of cocaine that rises and soon afterwards comes crashing down. This may help explain why modafinil, unlike cocaine, is actually completely non-addictive, despite sharing the same molecular targets in the brain. There's also little evidence suggesting tolerance with prolonged modafinil use to be an issue, but more on that in a bit. This of course doesn't mean that modafinil is completely safe to use of course. Modafinil use comes with some serious side effects, one of the most important being insomnia. Daily use of modafinil can leave you feeling too wired to sleep, perhaps getting only 3-4 to four hours of sleep each night. This feels a little counterintuitive as our brains need sleep to process and commit new information to our long term memories. If you're studying for an upcoming exam, then good quality sleep should be an essential part of your study plan. And while studies have confirmed that tolerance and tolerance with modafinil isn't an issue, I personally know people who've had to increase their doses incrementally to achieve the same effect modafinil initially gave them. And so when it was time for them to go to sleep late at night, they just couldn't, and so they had to drink themselves to sleep, and then repeat the same cycle each and every day, which is just not a good life to live. Something which me and Brian, a university student who takes modafinil, seem to agree on. Brian says, There is a big difference between taking it at university and taking it at work because work is the rest of your life, and having to take drugs to get through the rest of your life sounds terrible. And on that note... You know what? Let's not invade Russia in the winter. Let's go home, let's pop a beer, and let's live off the interest. Yeah. See you all next week and don't forget to check out my free newsletter on Substack, link in the description below. The newsletter will have all the references for this video. See you all next week.